Okay. So last class was about the engulfing buy and engulfing sell. Mainly on how to mark the engulfing buy or engulfing sell because this thing was important. If you did not spend time learning on marking, then that's your problem because the resources and the tools that I've provided should be able to make you able to mark. So now, as we begin the theory of engulfing, let me give you a simplification of it. We are going to be covering about an occurrence whereby when the first engulfing buy is formed, we create a zone. In this zone, we wait for this second engulfing buy to happen. This is the base model of it. Same goes for the cell. As the first engulfing cell is formed, we mark the zone. And as we wait for the price to come back into the zone, we wait for the occurrence of the engulfing cell number two. So this is what we'll be covering about. And there are a few crucial elements to why this is important. When you learn with me, I do not learn or teach you guys just on drawing. Some people, they just like to teach you how to draw. Let's say draw a trend line. Draw an engulfing. Draw a Fibonacci sequence. But what's the point of being able to draw if you do not understand what the fuck you're drawing? This is the issue with many teachers. Because... Truly, they have not dived deep enough to understand why must this happen so that your brain works on logic. The only way the brain can perceive the knowledge or information as logic is when the brain truly understands what is it doing. So then, we will cover on the logic of engulfing by number two. So when you have understand the logic of engulfing by number one and by number two, you become a more logical trader. So the crucial elements in this is number one, identifying the engulfing buy, number one. Secondly, is what I call it as the sideway. The sideway is the secret sauce to the recipe on making the theory of engulfing meets and engulfing works really well. So a sideway meaning as price starts to fly, it chills out in a sideway manner before returning back into. So far, everyone clear? Do not reply the chat. I will assume that you are clear. Hmm. So. Now, before we even talk about how to learn this, I want you guys to understand or put yourself into a perspective if it's possible. And everyone here, be it Arslan Fazal, Neo, Sagir Akram, Ahmed Imran, Alicia, um, Anish, all of you, I want you guys to just visualize yourselves as a scientist. So, back in the day, I wanted to become a doctor, but ended up pursuing engineering. But nevertheless, I was always interested in the world of science. Not really wanting to become a scientist, but after a while, I've realized the beautiful part of approaching this kind of um, degrees or education format is actually the way and the thought process on how it teaches your mind. So I was more fascinated with the approach to how engineers, scientists, doctors, basically problem-solving occupations on how they approach their issue or matter because they put it in a very good flow. Press the bell button on the chat. Yo, guys, just don't fucking type on the chat and no chat is going to pop out. If one or two guys are typing, let them be. Okay. 
So we are all scientists today and we are going to be doing an experiment. And I'm going to be labeling this experiment as we are going to study the COVID violence. As a scientist, as a doctor, we always have to begin an experiment with our hypothesis. What's, an, what's a hypothesis? A hypothesis is basically an assumption that we create before we validate and verify the whole incident. For example, an experiment about weight gain. We need to begin with a hypothesis. We cannot just say, I want to do an experiment on a weight gain. So where do you go on about? The experiment should be, does sugar truly affect um, weight loss or it doesn't? So then when we have the hypothesis, we know what to be experimenting on. Everyone agree, but do not reply agree. So we begin. Oh, shit. We begin with our first setup, which is a hypothesis. A hypothesis is a setup before we begin the experiment. So for my hypothesis as a COVID violent scientist, I'm going to say there is a potential. The hotter the country, the more violent COVID is. So meaning if it's in a cold country, the COVID violence is lower. If it's in the desert, COVID is more violent. Hence, when I create my first setup, it comes with a lot of flaws. F-L-A-W, not floor, flaw. What are the flaws? It is just based on potentials. It's a myth. It has no certainty. Agree? So can we use the hypothesis I made as a solution to solving COVID worldwide? Meaning we, we turn on a super large air conditioner. If we, do, if we do not verify this statement, the country is going to be spending a lot of stupid money buying gigantic tower size air conditioners, thinking that it will help the country's COVID case. So therefore, we always have to begin on our experiment. And from this experiment, we need to know basically how is the consistency of the statement above? And is there any validation to the statement above? That's the whole point of running an experiment. Okay. So then, the conclusion is obtained after a series of experimentation. As long as it has not been tested, it's not going to bring about new changes. So as a scientist, there were constant variables that had to be placed upon the the experiment for example let's say we must maintain the air condition below 20 degrees meaning we control the environment it needs to be in a controlled environment you cannot have different sorts of variable today you try to run the whole experiment in Alaska and then suddenly you go to the fucking Mount Everest to test it so your results are not going to be consistent so there is one part two part the third part <clears throat> alongside a constant variable in order for you to create a successful experiment so how the fuck does this relate to our situation as a trader so to me 
traders are modern money scientists. Technically, if we approach the market as a scientist, we can literally solve a lot of its mystery and its problem. So far, the hypothesis Whenever we form or we try to use the engulfing methodology, we start off with our hypothesis. So who can tell me what does the hypothesis resemble when it comes to engulfing? Who can tell me what does this mean when, when, when we want to use it in our candlesticks? There's one guy saying it's the confirmation. <laughs> There's one guy saying it's a price action. There's one guy saying it's a mapping. All are wrong. So oh, there's one guy who got it right. So if we are a trader, we need to know what is our hypothesis because this is our first step. So the hypothesis is our num our first engulfing zone okay hold on yeah someone's texting me The first engulfing zone is actually our hypothesis. What does that mean? Whenever we mark our first engulfing buy zone or our first engulfing sell zone, it is as if we are just having our hypothesis. Meaning, engulfing cell number one occurred. So in this zone, Potentially, we can sell. Potentially, there are buyer, eh, there are sellers. So it's all about the potentials. That is why I always tell you guys: if you just know how to mark one engulfing, you will see sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work because you guys still do not know what to be waiting for. So there are times when you send me screenshots, sir, it's an engulfing zone. So then the price came in, you press buy, and then it flew, and then you'd be like, oh my God, your method works so much. And I'm just like, what? Holy shit, bro, you are so lucky to, to, to manage to get the buy on it. Because you were just assuming. But thank God, you are assuming in a zone that worked. But what if it doesn't? Boom. It goes down. If you guys remember, I always say before, a zone is just a zone. A price is just a price. When I say, for example, I want to look at 1851 to sell, it's just a hypothesis still. I haven't found my confirmation. But instead, I sold at 1840. And then one guy got Base, you fucker, you said you want to sell at 1851. Why did you sell at 1840? Then I missed the signal. Fuck you. So this is what I call a stupid, uneducated trader. Because a zone is just a zone. What happens in the zone will give us the confirmation. So, the first hypothesis represents the first engulfing zone. So whenever you mark the first engulfing zone, doesn't mean it will work. But what does it say? It's just saying, let's say at price 1911 of gold, gold formed an engulfing cell. 
Hence, people will potentially sell when the price comes back to one nine one one. Correct. <coughs> Sorry. So the potentially is the word, but in order for you to sell, you need to do some testing. So this testing period of time or experimentation period of time is what I refer to as the side way. So meaning after number one has happened, number two has happened, has to happen first. So the side way has to happen. Only then when the price comes back into the fucking zone and if it forms an engulfing cell number two in the zone, then we can conclude that there is a seller's zone. So far, can you guys understand? I'm not going on chart yet. I'm just under teaching you the flow of process and the flow of thoughts. So do you guys see the, the amount of decision making you have to go through as a trader all the time when you want to take a single button? So to those ungrateful motherfuckers out of 1,000 of you, this is the work that I put in every day before pressing a button. These are the things I do and wait for and make your life easier with to just click the button. But you do not see the struggle behind it. You only see the results. Hence, the results are always much beautiful for people who actually understand this. What the fuck I'm doing? Okay. Can you explain again, boss? I'll explain one more time. This is understanding the flow of thoughts. You have to treat yourself as a scientist every day when you get into the market. When the market opens, you are not a gambler, you are a scientist. And as a scientist, we need to know what the fuck we want to do. So now we are a scientist in the realm of locating engulfing potential zones. So we will use engulfing as a tool to locate a potential zone. That is number one. This is our religion. Some scientists use the microscope because they are the scientists of biology. Some scientists use ultra infrared maybe or like some sonar as a tool because they are geologists. We as a trader, we use engulfing as a tool to locate potential zones. So remember, a tool can only go so far. It's who handles the tool will cause the outcome. I can give two swords, one guy will die and one guy will win. Because one guy knows how to use a sword and that one guy doesn't know how to use a sword. So then, we begin as a scientist in developing our hypothesis. So when we open the chart, When we open the chart, we have to have our subconscious hypothesis. Meaning, what is the hypothesis? First, we need to identify potential zones using engulfing. Because, like I said, when you enter the market, you have to develop your hypothesis before you begin your experiment. 
you cannot say you just want to create an experiment. That means you cannot just say, I just want to trade today. You will lose. Instead, I want to create my hypothesis and I want to locate the price. So we use engulfing as a tool to locate the price. For example, engulfing sell. So now there is a hypothesis over here. And then when there's a hypothesis, there's a sideway. Price came back in. Sold. Drop. You guys start to see? So after you have done your hypothesis and you have waited for your testing of the experiment, which is sideways, then you wait for engulfing number two to happen in the zone of engulfing number one. Only then you can conclude whether there's a seller or there's a buyer. So this is the overview of why we need engulfing meets and engulfing for step one. So far everyone clear. I'm not even teaching you anything yet. I'm just trying to get the logic and the importance of this concept first into your mind. Because to reference it, as a scientist, we want to be the best scientist. So this is the flow to become the best scientist in conducting any experience. And then now we are traders. And then we want to become as successful as that scientist. So we want to become a fucking successful trader. So these are the flow that we need to get into before we click the button. Don't ask me questions, what time frame, blah, 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 here and there yet. Because that is when we get into the marking. This is, I'm teaching you the flow of thoughts. If you understand the flow of thoughts, then you will be able to adapt to the marking of engulfing really quickly. Because you can understand the logic. Why do you have to do this? Why you have to wait for this? Why you have to do this? Okay. Can we proceed? Or do you need time to make your notes? So please screenshot this first. Screenshot. Okay, next. Screenshot. Screenshot. Okay. So that was the logic of it now we get into the technical theoretical and impl implementation part of it so this is where you need to fully devote your logic hold on there's some space um let me write seven space available So today, what are we going to achieve in this lesson is first is how do we validify a certain engulfing, meaning how do we validate? Is this valid or not? How do we get a strong engulfing zone? Because there are times the zone is strong and there are times the zone is weak. And how do we build a basic yet solid engulfing setups? So these are the three things we try to cover off today. Okay? Why not use gold? Relax, bro. You understand the knowledge first. Only then you go to practical. If you don't understand the logic of this, understanding the importance of all this, you're not going to go anywhere. These are my mind on a paper. So let's talk about the first engulfing. And what does it truly represent? 
and how can it bring about meaning. No, I'm not going to explain on charts. You follow my flow. This is why Shabi Haider, you are not going to be a successful trader if you keep being too eager to trade. Because you are showing your excitedness to wanting to know how to press carefully in the market. But you are not willing to go through this part of learning. So please relax. So now this is the visualization of a particular engulfing, more specifically engulfing buy. And engulfing buy, like I said, if you haven't watched the video, please go watch on YouTube. But the base of it is, it's an occurrence when a green candle overpowers the red candle. The, the, the rule to it is, the body of the green candle needs to be above the wick of the left side. What do I mean by that? If we have this kind of situation, This is not valid because the body of this candle is lower than the green candle. Do you see that? But what is valid? If the body of the green candle is higher than the wick on the left side, I have a first question. Do you never sleep? How can you awake day and night? Man, I put alarm on your notification. You're always awaking. <laughs> I don't sleep. It's a waste of time. So then, we have to first understand the meaning of the first engulfing. And I'm going to be teaching you guys in the reference or perspective of a H4. The, you can use any time frames. Doesn't matter but I trade on a bigger time frame all the time. So the meaning of the engulfing is, firstly, it is an indication of a potential reversal. Understand that when an engulfing happens, it is an indication of a potential reversal. Meaning, if price is climbing up, there is a potential of a reverse. If price is falling down, there's a potential of a reversal up. Secondly is, we can use engulfing as a tool to locate where are the volume shifting. Meaning, with engulfing, we are able to locate high volume zones. So when we get to trade in a high volume zone, we are ought to be making bigger pips, 60 to 150 pips. If we are not able to look at high volume zones, we'll be making 10, 30 pips. Either buy or sell, doesn't matter. And through the development of the first engulfing appearance, we are able to also locate a strong demand zone. So far, everyone clear? Which then links back to the hypothesis ideology. As the first engulfing is built, we can manage to create a zone. So remember when I said about as a, as a scientist, we have to have what we call as the constant variable, meaning a set of rules that is set. You cannot simply change the rules. Same goes as a trader. We need to have a set of zone that it respects because in this zone is where the buyers or the sellers will live. So if it starts breaking the zone, it's not respecting the, the ideology. 
So this is the constant variable. Once a zone is built, you have to respect the box. There's no such thing as if it breaks the box and then you still want to keep looking for the buy and all that stuff. Over 10 times you do it, 7 times you will lose, 3 times you might win. Let's say you hold it and then suddenly, boom, flies back up. But out of 10 times you do it, 7 times you're going to be like this. Okay? So, now I want to test you guys use logic so when when we are able to draw engulfing zones how do you think we are going to determine whether the zone is super strong or super weak based on what we can see here what do you think determines this buy zone will either be strong or weak? Tell me. Strong or weak? How do we determine? Higher the time frame, rejection, continuation candle. Nope, nope, nope. Candle doesn't break. Okay, stop typing for a while. Okay, logic again. How do we determine that this zone is super strong, medium strong, fucking weak? I want a perfect answer. What is this maximum rejection? What, what's candle size? What's this strength of the candle? Be specific. Like, What do you mean by that? Make a two-year-old understand what the fuck you're trying to say. Multiple rejection from that zone. No? The bullish engulfing is high. What do you mean by that? By the size of the wick. Nope. Volume. That's the point. We're trying to get volume. So, how do we determine? Only sideways. How long? Blah, blah. Okay, stop. No more. No good answer. So, if you are using engulfing, there is one particular way that you can sort of use to decide whether the, the probability of the trade in this zone will either be strong or weak. And Let's take a scenario of if we were trying to buy. Let's say a buy scenario. And then I will ask you to say, okay, please get me an engulfing buy zone and make a report about it. And in the report, I want, to, I want you to include the potential strength of this zone. So it's very simple, but somehow people always tend to not use logic. We can sort of identify the strength of the zone is the, by the character of this particular candle. Okay. Basically, how did the buy breakout happen? There are scenarios whereby we can get an engulfing buy zone, but somehow when price comes back and you try to buy, it just poof, go. And then there are certain engulfing buy zone that when the price just literally pokes, it will poof, go. It's literally by the momentum of the breakout. So the hypothesis for this statement is the, oh shit. The bigger the breakout that formed the engulfing zone, the stronger the potential of the upcoming buy. What do I mean by that? 
I'll give you an example. For example, let's just take. Um, I'm going to use a different chart. Okay. Let's say this Euro USD. I want to show you first a strong engulfing. No, I want to show you a weak engulfing first. Okay, let's take about this one and let's role play in our head. We are here. Okay. And boom, the price spiked. And left an engulfing buy over here. As price came back inside, it broke. So let's say if you were to buy over here, smack down to the ground, and then it rejects over here. Why? So let's role play in our head. This is an engulfing buy zone that you picked. And this engulfing buy zone, when it did the breakout, the next candle showed a reversal. Because you guys see the opening of this candle is over here, meaning it opened in a gap. It, when it opens, it immediately drops over here. So the power of this wasn't as strong compared to, for example, this engulfing buy zone. Because this engulfing buy zone, when it bursts up, it did not only break an engulfing cell, which is a resistance, let me mark that. But at the same time, after breaking, it flew like crazy. So meaning the buyers over here had a lot of power. But where did the bursting started to happen in this zone? It's from this particular candle, correct? Because as price fell down, oh, as price fell down and did a reversal, the buyers kicked in over here and pushed the price up in this engulfing buy zone. So in the end, when I pull this guy over here, did you see where it read? Let me just. Compare where did it reject stronger? If you buy in this zone just now over here, you would have got smacked down to the ground. But it came back here, it reverses the whole way. Because why? This engulfing wasn't strong. This engulfing was stronger because of how it created the zone. So if I were to just filter down the zone to the root of where it happened, is from this beginning and the beginning of this reversal. So look what happened in the future. Kaboom. So you weren't wrong over here, but it just wanted to get the best price to buy. So how the breakout was formed is as important. Do not do this kind of marking. Be disciplined as a newbie. You mark the whole box first. Once you have reached my level and you understand the logic, that's why we can get sharp, sharp entries, smaller zones. I mark it like this because I understand this is the beginning of the U-turn that made the engulfing buy that also broke the resistance up here. But if you keep practicing just drawing it like this, sometimes you're not going to even get it right because your zone might not be an engulfing buy zone. 
you're just putting your zone at the lowest part of the reversal. So that's wrong. For example, what do I mean by that? Some people, when they do not learn how to mark the whole zone, for example, this is the engulfing cell zone. But you know what? They feel like they are, um, they are like pro and shit like that. They want, just want to mark the higher part of the zone. Because why? The first time they did it, they got the cell. But the second time they did it, holy shit, they got wrecked. So be disciplined with the marking. Do not cut corners. Mark the whole box because you are here to experience the, the whole thing. I'm going to show you my examples. For example, now, this is an engulfing cell, correct? Meaning this is a cellless zone. After the red candle drop, we can mark it. So in our mind, we should just delete these three red candles. It didn't exist yet at that time. This is where we were. To be more specific, this is what we saw. So we saw an engulfing cell. And then most of the time, you try to sell in here when the price started to come back, thinking it's a pullback. Kaboom. What happens? Fly the fuck out. But then, look what happens here. Because the reversal just now not only broke one engulfing cell zone, it broke two engulfing cell zone easily. So we know that this guy over here is a strong engulfing buy zone. So this guy is strong because he defeated two armies of resistance with an ease of mind. So look what happens in the future. So when you can locate a strong engulfing buy zone, even if you were to buy here, 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 as long as it doesn't break the box, you will be in profit even if you float. Boom, fly. Comes back in, boom, fly. Comes back in, boom, fly. Fly. Because as it was playing in the strong engulfing buy zone, it kept building more engulfing buy. And then it kept building more engulfing buy. So you guys start to see the logic. I'm not teaching you the flow of marking yet, but I'm teaching you about identifying strong zones, the logic. Are you guys clear or are you guys lost? This is not teaching the setup, yes? This is teaching or no, just showcasing you about the logic of engulfing. Someone's lost. Who else is lost? If 90% says they are clear, I'm going to just proceed. If anyone is lost, tell me you are lost. Lost, lost, lost. Clear, 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 lost, clear, 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 lost. So don't worry. To the lost ones, Remember, this is black sheep, baby. No one is left behind. So I will try to do it again. So just now was a showcase of understanding how do we kind of build our confidence with the engulfing buy zone. For example, there are times when you make an engulfing buy zone, price comes in and it spikes. And you'll be like, oh man, if only I put it put more lots like oh man if only I put bigger I could have made 500 so we want to avoid that oh man situation or like for example you press buy and then suddenly boom oh man why did it burst before we mark our first engulfing buy we have to see how strong 
this engulfing buy is so that in the future if we even want to try to buy in here we can then allocate a certain risk management for it for example this setup will be like mm, this is medium risk it might work but if it breaks maybe it wants to go lower and fly from there so for example like how for example like this scenario Let me change color. For example, in the scenario of this green box, you mark the engulfing buy. Price came out, came back in, you press buy. But the, the important part when you press buy is you know, okay, if I'm wrong, where will it go? So from here, you can implement a certain risk to reward. You'll be like, okay, I want to buy 0 0.03, 0 0.1 first over here. Because, you know, there's another zone down here. If it goes into the zone, it might fly later. So I can put more entries over here. So price came in, kaboom, drops. So you were clear about what was going to happen if it drops. Hence, you let go about the, the whole thought process over here. You'll be like, okay, never mind. I'm floating a little. But now let's focus here. The problem with you, when you are floating, you are focusing on the float. Holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. Am I going to win? Holy shit. No. When you are floating, your mind should be, okay, things went bad. What's next? Ah, okay. There's another engulfing buy zone in here. This is stronger than this. Because when this engulfing buy happened, it broke through one engulfing cell. It broke through two engulfing cells and then flew after the pullback. So you know that maybe it just dropped here to go for the bigger bias so that if it does fly from here, it will fly higher than this guy because the happening of this first kaboom was the first attempt. This is the hypothesis. This is the engulfing number one. And when price comes back, it does engulfing number two. And then there's another engulfing buy. So when it starts to fly, do you see it will fly higher than this? So far, you clear? I was teaching you on the creating a logic out of your trade. So in the process of holding the trade, that's why I said holding a trade is not bad if you know what you're doing. But for newbies, if you don't know what the fuck you're doing, you better cut the trade. If you buy over here, you want to hold, okay, as long as it respects the next engulfing buy zone on H4. So you can float, 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 float. Price will come back. Kaboom. Fly. And in the future, let's see what happens when price comes back in here. Look. Touch the box and fly again. So this is a strong box. But when in the future, if it comes back in here, are you going to buy again? Are you going to buy again if it comes back in here? You can buy if you want, but you know you need to know if it fails. That's why cut loss is important. Because if it fails, the same power that pushed the price up will be working in the opposite direction to push the price down. So this is why holding a trade is okay if you know what you're doing. So some of you on Friday was like, ha ha bro, I didn't put SL because I trust you so much. I put more layer at top. Wow, make money. Well, thank God that because when I trade, my zones are not usually that wrong because it was just this kind of scenario. I didn't want to miss on the sell 
on the goal cell. Let me just open goal. I didn't want to miss on the goal cell. We sold during the price was here. This middle area. The same power of dropping could have just happened from here and pushed the price all the way down to 1819, 1817. So that's why we went in here. And I didn't expect the retracement to put 1843. It should just be around this area, usually 90% of the time. So we went wrong, but it's gold. So we need to have. SL. Okay. Same issue. So back to the, to the books. So first, as a trader, we have to locate the first engulfing number one. After you have made the first engulfing number one, let's say you are a newbie that really wants to become fucking professional quickly. Have a notebook by your side that you will write something like this. So now just imagine... Um, Let's just imagine if I mark here engulfing by, for example. I need to write notes about it. I need to write my report. Engulfing report. Number one. I... Arslan, for example, one of your for our followers' name, have marked first engulfing by. So then I need to know strength level of that engulfing by. Maybe when I look at this, eh, it, it was not that strong. It did the engulfing buy, but it stopped here at the potential resistance zone. It didn't fly like crazy. So um, strength level is weak to medium. So can I full margin? Now you have to write your report. No. Because strength level is weak. So then you have to write another report. EG2 available. Answer is no. No EG2 yet. Engulfing number two. So then you are a scientist, remember. Success rate. To buy. You have to put. So as a scientist, I want to say this is only 30% success rate win. 70% lose. So when you have this ratio in your mind, then would you open big lots? Would you open a big lot? If you were a scientist, when every trade you were making, you had such a note by your side covering this matter of course you wouldn't full margin so become a fucking good trader as a newbie because for me now when I do my trades I will speak in my mind all this but when I was a noob like you guys I wrote it down because I mean maximum I will only need to make three reports a day maximum I don't trade 10 times a day. Okay? So then with this practice and habit, 
believe me, you yourself will become conscious of the matter and then you become more wise. Because you know, you read the, the success rate by your own intuition is the T70. Understand? So this trait, let's say, I put 0 0.01. If it hits SL, would I be crying? Would I be crying? No, because I will open back my notes. I, Arslan Farzal, have made, made engulfing by. I have also said it was weak to medium. I've also said I cannot full margin. I've also said potential of losing was higher, but I wanted to test my knowledge. So if I lose, would I cry? No, I'll be like, yeah, next time I'll be more careful setups like this. The old me would full margin. Ah, see? A lot of things to become great in trading is more towards how you um, construct the flow of your execution. Okay, the flow is more important rather than just the trade itself. My voice is echoing, is it? So, everyone clear? So far, is everyone okay with the pace I'm going or you are lost? Do you think you're learning anything new or should I bump it up another level? I need to know your level of um, knowledge receiving method or whatever. I can pump another level if you feel like all this you had known in your head. Was this all known in your head before this or no? M1 and M5. <laughs> See, that's your problem. You think you are ready for such knowledge. Bitch, please. There's a long way to go. Long way to go before you are even able to be learning about M1 and M5. Because that's where the chaos happened. Okay. So this, this is goal. I will explain to you what happened. Um, let's go to H4. Okay, how do I begin this? Um, okay, uh, for this week, gold was already in a very strong buying momentum. What happened on Thursday was this guy over here. This sudden burst. This was when we managed to get the buy. When others were selling. So, kaboom boom, flew up all the way. We got a sell over here, remember? All the way down to here. But then on Friday, on Friday, this happened. During the first Euro session of the day, we managed to get the sell from here till here. Oof, all the way down. And then as price started to retrace back, this was when it got tricky. So many of you do not understand that on a bigger time frame perspective, gold has already approached one of its critical level for a strong reversal over here. This guy at the weekly level, this price point was the beginning of the massive drop back in 21st November, 2021. From here till here, it went on a continuous downtrend for almost 1,000 pips. And it has already poked it recently. Ta-da, over here. This was when we got the sell. So knowing this fact, whereby gold has picked up a fucking strong sell price from weekly that caused gold to drop for multiple weeks, three weeks, four weeks, continuous downtrend. Was it smart to even be buying in this region? So we were only looking for sales 90% of the time. And... I thought the, the most wonderful breakout has happened during the Euro session when we smacked down all the way to TP3. After that, we were entering the US session here. So 
in this period of time, the moment that we saw was during this retracement. Okay, so you have to understand that gold always does or like to do triple drops, meaning drop, 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 does a, a fake and um, a buy candle, and then it drops again. One candle, two candle, and then boom, the third rate candle. For example, <clears throat> one candle, second candle, the third candle goes really hardcore. For example, here. Price drop, one candle, second candle, third candle, boom, drop. So this scenario could have happened over here. So that's why I did not give a buy because the whole day, the sell was ready to happen. But approaching the US session, volume was not in. So the US players wanted the best price. So they still they push the price for a short period of time and then kaboom drop. Why did it drop over there? First engulfing cell. If I do an entity, you will see clearer. One engulfing cell. And on the left side over here, engulfing by one, engulfing by number two, broken. Two strong support levels are broken, kaboom. So as price were going up, would I risk buying up here? No, because 90% of the time, it will just drop the same volume that pushed the price temporarily up. Fucking push it, will push the price down from here. So those that bought over here was lucky. But the indication of the failure to sell was already spotted. Remember? When I said this particular M5, watch the video, the M5 video. When the M5 was broken over here, you have the decision to cut at three to four pips or you can hold if you want to. Boom, flew all the way. Why did I not cut at four pips? Because I knew this could be the next zone it wanted to reverse. So from here to here was just like a 20 pips float. But of course, we are not the one who controls the market. So it still wanted the best price. Who can say? You cannot control it. And boom. It took so long to go up. It took just a few candles to go down. So this is a strong sell zone. This whole zone was a strong sell zone. The logic behind it was it has picked up the monthly order from here. And this order from here is not a random order that pops up of nowhere. If I pull it to the left, there is an engulfing cell zone back in the day. See it? This is what I call a hidden engulfing on a weekly time frame. Meaning, back in the day, this price was not much respected. So as on the weekly time frame, if it maintains below the red box, it drops. If it maintains above the red box, it flies. But when we were here, it has went below the green box. So any time now, gold can just reverse the fuck out of gold and just boom, go back to 1763, 1748. Just like how the rest of Bitcoin, Ethereum and all are dropping like crazy. It could happen. Just that when the volume is too big, like I said, small accounts will die because <clears throat> we couldn't handle the float. So these kind of situations are the reason to why when you consistently practice full margin, you will get wrecked. Even you are right on the direction, but if your account cannot sustain 
the major pullback, the retracements, you're gonna die. You can't do anything about it. Okay. So let's begin now for the second engulfing. So far, everyone clear me, uh, hear me. Can we begin? Everyone ready? Okay. So we have went through the importance of the first engulfing buy and the kind of rules that it had to do and what does it represent. So then now, after the first engulfing buy zone has been formed, it is very crucial for the other element to happen, which is the sideway before entering back into the zone. Because it can be either this as option one, or it can do this, correct? Spike up, poop, come back in. You guys get me? First scenario, this is the second scenario. First scenario, it took so long. Up here, comes back in. Up, go. Second scenario, it goes up, pop, but comes back in really quick. So, why is it important for this sideways to happen logically? Why is this important? Who can answer me? Try. There's 1,000 of you to pick up the orders, price compression, to form kind of base. No, my question is why does this need to happen before the second engulfing has to happen? Market correction, play with informations, blah, 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 to cool off. Okay, Clinton, I wanna ask Clinton because he said to let the market cool off. The fuck do you mean by the market to cool off? What do you mean by that contraction? Oh, you guys are using all the bombastic word. I hope your profits are bombastic as well. Very bombastic words. To confirm this, to confirm that. Holy shit. Redistribution of downward movement. Wow. Don't use bombastic words that you yourself do not understand. <laughs> <laughs> it's a rest of the push wow this is what rest some holiday villa even. because if you are not able to use basic words means you don't understand but to compensate for that insecurity you use bombastic words to make yourself feel fucking professional retest someone said the fuck does that mean <laughs> institutions trap the retailer holy shit we are on a hunt <laughs> let's go let's go give me all these bombastic words come on you guys should really tap the back tap your back and be like fuck man I did not know I was this stupid okay now the words are going simpler there's like volume, there's consolidation. Okay, now the the now the the texts are going a bit more um <laughs> basic. Okay, now they're using basic words. This is good. Lower down the ego. This is lowering down your ego when you do not know what the fuck you're saying. Don't say shit. Okay, if not, you will be like Rahul and friends. Or that you'll be like the, the claim to be king of gold, giving the holy confirmation, apparently. Sideways is important for buyers and sellers to make decision on the direction of the market. I'm not asking why the sideways is important for that matter. My question was why was the sideways important before the engulfing number two happened? <laughs> Uh, 
accumulating period. What is all this? Never mind. Now, stop typing. Hands off your device. Look at your palm. Let's do this practice. Look at your palm right now of your hand. Literally look at it. Okay. Look at it. Wait, how do I see everyone else's um, video? Anyone opening their video camera? How do I view this? Okay, let's look. Okay. Mr. Stella, look at the palm of your hand. Right now, take out your hand, put it higher, let everyone see it. Okay, look at it. Bring it closer to your head, to your face. Bring it closer to your face. Okay, put it on your forehead. Put it on your forehead. And say, I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so no more bombastic words from anyone. You guys are just trying to be funny. <laughs> Mr. Stella, I'm just joking. Putting some fun into the class, okay? This is for everyone, not you specifically. So. <laughs> it's okay. This is how I teach adults. Because adults are very hard to teach. It's simply because they believe that they know everything. This is the habit of an adult. All adults in here. When you think you are right, yeah, anyone's opinion, you will say it's wrong. So now, it's simple. Why does the sideway need to happen before the appearance of the engulfing by number two? Is to simply prove that the first buyers that created the zone is strong. If the buyers was strong, now let me ask you this logic. If the buyers was really strong, would the sellers up here be able to push the price down quickly? No, Rajat, stop saying all this bullshit word, contraction to expansion movement. I'm teaching you the basic of logic. If you said this zone is strong, would the price come back in really quickly? Of course not. The longer the sideway, the longer that it proves the explosion that happened here really was really strong, that everyone somehow can't push the price back down. Because the moment as if price decides to come back down even, it goes back up. Comes back down, goes back up. Meaning the buyers are still very present. Logic. So now, those who said the market expansion, the triangle explosion, the, all this Mr. Bombastic, Mr. Fantastic. Was this anywhere near to your answers that you picked up out of the textbook that never brought you any logic? Hutang ina bobo is what the Philippines would say to like stupid idiots. So have the logic first. The duration that it is on the sideway is a good indication. I'm not saying it's a confirmation. It's a good indication that the buyers over here was really strong for it to be able to not allow anyone to come back here. Meaning, this is the mafia. And this is you up here. If the mafia was here, would you be wanting to chill back in this zone? You can't. You just can't come in. Yes, I play Dota 2. Okay? Tanginamo. So please, no more bombastic words. So this is why the next recipe is a sideway, which I will show you. After the sideway has been done, 
we have to wait for the second engulfing buy to happen within the zone of the first engulfing buy. Because remember, this then acts as the confirmation or the conclusion to the experiment. We have done our first hypothesis. We have done the testing, which is a side way. Now we have waited for the confirmation to happen. So now I ask you guys, all this flow, all this flow, what confirmation is it giving us actually? Is it a confirmation to entry? Is it a confirmation? What confirmation? What confirmation does it hold? Is it a confirmation to press buy or sell? Confirmation from Rahul. <laughs> You are wrong. Your answers are not precise. The answer that is precise is the confirmation of the direction. We have gotten the direction's confirmation of that particular time frame. For example, is it going in an uptrend or is it going in a downtrend? So just because engulfing number two has appeared, if you try to enter, sometimes you might float and hit SL before it flies. Because the confirmation that we were getting is the confirmation of direction. For example, now let me show you. I will go on a slower pair for you guys. Because for go, you just need to be too precise. For example, let's go on... Euro USD, for example. Let's take this, for example. So, what's the flow? What do we have to do? First is our hypothesis, creating the hypothesis. So now watch me how I speak to myself. <clears throat> okay, my name is Dr. Black Sheep. I will be conducting an experiment on the locating potential price of a cell for gold. So my first hypothesis states that in this purple box range, which contains the price of its highest at 1.13485, and the lowest part of 1.13210 as hypothesis number one. So let me write my hypothesis first. I'm just sketchy. I don't do this every day. I used to do this when I was in loop. So you want to be pro, you do this. You don't want to be pro, don't have to do this. Dr. Black Sheep report. Hypo, 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 hypothesis, potential seller zone. Purple box, range. Remember the range is our constant variable. 1.13485 till 1.13210. So this is my hypothesis and my constant variable. Engulfing number one. Okay. So. I have done my first hypothesis. Now I have to do what? What do I have to do? What do I have to do? Hello?
Now I have to wait for sideway. The sideway symbolizes my experiment. So mark it as a blue box sideway. So sideway has happened from period here to here before it enters back into the zone. Okay. So now I write my report. Dr. Black Sheep. Report. Hypothesis done. Testing of experiment. Done. So now, as a scientist, I need to wait for what? Wait for what? Occurrence of engulfing cell number two. In where? In the purple zone. So I saw this guy happening. Okay, cool. Mark it. So remember, I'm Mr. Doctor. So part one is done. Sideway experiment. Part two is done. Engulfing cell in bubble box. So now, conclusion. Potential cell direction. Remember, it's direction. We get direction from this setup, not <coughs> entry. So, After this, it pulled back into here. As long as it doesn't break the higher region, let me mark the red box. Pink box. As long as it respects the highest point of the purple box, it will not fly. So from here, drops back down, 50 pips. Comes back up, drops back down, 60 pips. Comes back up, drops back down, 14 pips. What happened here? Price approach the highest point with an engulfing buy. This was the time if you press sell again, you are fucked. Boom, flew back up. Suddenly price came back in. Boom, drop. Came back in, boom, drop. So look, from the experiment, we have gotten a very strong sell zone. You guys understand? But for our experiment, our entry was only here. This was our entry area. This was experiment one. This is the testing. This is the confirmation. This was it. This is why I don't like re-entries. Because it gives, gives me anxiety 
whenever sometimes you guys always like to re-enter at my zone and then you get profit, I'll be like, wow, they are so lucky. Because I know if it breaks my zone, it's going to burst immediately. Okay. So now, let's talk about this. For, it, for this zone to maintain a seller's zone, it should have not broken this price level of H4. This has broken and then kaboom, it drops, correct? But in the future, look what happened. After this guy have managed to break the walls, in the future, it becomes easier to break the wall. And then it's just about time when it breaks the wall and bursts. It's logic. For example, back in the day, one guy, only one guy in your classroom was not afraid of scolding the teacher. This was the guy. He was the first one who did it. Because everyone has saw that this guy did it before, when the time comes, someone else will try to do it. And then when someone else has done it again and they got away successfully, someone else will try it. And now a lot of people will try it. This is the logic of psychology. Understand? So this is why when it broke this, it was already about time for it to break. So one thing about Euro USD and currency pass, when it breaks my zone, you still have time to recover. For example, if you hold it, you can get still your profit. But with gold, it's different. Although, this to this is only 33 pips for Euro USD. But in gold, this to this is already 120 pips. This to this is already 300 pips. So this is why trading currency is much safer because even if you float, but you know how to mark directions, right? It's hard for you to fuck up your account because you can keep selling in the seller's zone from all the way from here until someone breaks it. But when someone breaks it, remember I always use the word, there is two types of a breakout. Continuation breakout, or it will break out in the future. Meaning, because of this occurrence, it could have gone as high as here, straight away, like shoo. Or it does a, a pullback first. But it was because of this break, that it was easier now for it to go higher because it's no longer a virgin. You guys can get me? Do you see the logic? So as a scientist of Forex, when we conduct our experiment, we only, no, I mean, for me personally, I do not like to re-enter. So I get my number one, I get my number two, I get my number three confirmation, I wait for the price to come back in, I try to get the sharpest entry. SL is still inevitable. But with the consistency and discipline, it's very hard for you to hit SL. For example, I will try on a pair. Okay, what pair do you guys want? Let me just try a random pair. What, what do you want to see? Because some will say, or oh, maybe you just pick a particular pair, but it doesn't work. Okay, let's say gold. Someone a hey, GJ. Someone says GJ. Okay. Engulfing cell number one. Correct. This was it. <coughs> Engulfing cell number one. Okay, now I ask you. As a as a as an experiment, as an as a scientist. First hypothesis done. Correct. Second is what after hypothesis, which is 
in the price range of this yellow line, price, blah, 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 do all that. What is next? Sideway. Price came out. Did it do any sideway? It came back in. Correct? It didn't do any sideway. Where's the sideway? Where's the sideway? No sideway. This is, I mean, it is a sideway, but it's not long. So then when you put on your, your report, you have to say this is a high risk because this part of the experiment is not perfect. But okay, never mind. Oh, it happened again in here. Okay. Engulfing cell number two. And then came back out. A better sideway. Did it break the box? Didn't. There's another engulfing cell here. And then <coughs> there's another engulfing cell here. But this engulfing cell was the nice one because this engulfing cell broke the box, meaning cell is out really strong. So then in the future, after the breakout has happened, price came back in, poke and go. <laughs> Drop. But you'll be like, Mr. Black Sheep, what the fuck do I do if I miss up here? Relax. That's why I said don't be baboons. Engulfing cell number one. Engulfing cell number two. Now you know in your mind you missed the sharpest entry. But if you want to take the trade, SL must be above the proper box of the continuation entry, yellow line, because this is the reversal, this is the continuation entry. Why you can be confident here? Because look here, let me stop one engulfing. Green candle, red candle eaten. Sell. 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 Ooh, drop. You get me? But if I use the formula, I would have gotten this confirmation, correct? Direction has been done which is a selling direction. So on a H4 perspective, bigger time frame perspective, was it smart to look for a buy? So this is why baboons like to scalp. Sometimes they are lucky when they get hooked by over here. But let's say if they weren't lucky and all this on the right side did not exist, meaning God did not let it float for too long. Let me just mark this area as... A different color, yellow, for example. Yellow box didn't, didn't happen. Meaning after the confirmation up here, woo, it could just shorten the period of time and skip all this bullshit and just drop. You guys get me? This yellow box is bullshit. You cut this out of the picture. What do I mean by that? Let me draw it black. Ah. How do I increase the pen size? Now ah, we cut all this bullshit because this was just a lucky low volume. Now I draw for you. You see what I mean? 
So I don't trade on luck. I do not like channels that give bullshit ratio. 10 pips TP, 60 pips SL. How do you win in the market? And then when we look at the signals that are sent, holy fuck, man. You, when it's for you guys, you, you do not know anything. You'll be like, ah, he hits more TP. He hits more TP. But we, when we are an expert, we look at the decision making that was made will be like, holy man, like, you, you just don't care about people's money. You give every single possible SNR, and if it hits SL, it's okay, recovery. It's okay, blame the market 90% of the time. So this is why I say there's a lot of baboons. So now everyone clear on this? So it's, it's, um, it's Lara Summers over here. Yes, Miss Lara Summers. Lara Summers, where are you? She's there. Okay. So now the practice to this is <coughs> on Monday, Lara will be starting a new series, meaning every day we will be just picking a pair that we watch throughout the day through the concept of engulfing. Meaning she will do this experiment, but she will do the experiment in a way. Maybe she says, let's experiment with H1, guys. Dr. Lara here, H1 engulfing one, H1 engulfing two sideways and see what happens the whole point of it of this series coming up is not for you to trade her signals but she can be a very good and dedicated person to be making you guys watch and learn based on this format because like i said this is not enough to give you the perfect entry but this is enough to give you the logic to, the, to identifying the direction. So if the direction co-aligns with anybody's signals, then you can try and take it. At least now, if Rahul and Baboons hit SL even, you were about to take the cell, but you didn't know where to press. So they gave a cell, maybe you'll be like, okay, what, you know what? I saw a cell. Let me just try to take the setup with their signals. Okay. I opened educational words. So this is the theory of engulfing meets engulfing, the importance of it, the basic understanding and concept towards it. Your job now as the members of 1%, you have to fucking practice this thing first. You have to do it on your charts. Right or wrong, buy or sell is not the question. The question is to observe what happens when the experiment is completed. Because as a doctor, you need to validate and find the consistency of the experiment. I have done my experiment, but you cannot just trust my words. You have to do your own experiment because who knows? You can become better. <clears throat> and then now, I want to teach you how to follow my signal at even more profitability level. Okay, do you guys want that? 900 of you who are here? You can test on something, but be very, very certain of this. Okay. If you try this method, you might make serious insane money so i have realized one thing about my signals my signals are fucking good but i'm a breakout kind of trader so meaning i like to trade the breakouts so when a breakout trade happens go wrong it will fuck your account up so try this 
Let's say if I say sell now at 1850, TP1, TP2, TP3, 1848, 1856, 1844. SL is 1854. Okay. Let's say I say sell now at 1850. You put one small instant order. For example, you are trading standard, you always press 0 0.5, for example. You press 0 0.1 on the spot, and then you sell limit 0 0.4, 20 pips above my entry. 1852, <clears throat> pending order. SL remains. So now I've realized you will cut your SL from 40 pips down to 20 pips, which is jack shit. Like it's dead. Because if you open 0 0.5, 40 pips SL is 200 USD. But if it's 20 pips SL, it's only 100 USD. So you have risk half of your risk amount. You delete the pending order if, let's say I say sell now. In one minute, boom, hits TP1. Like, boom, hits TP1. If it hits TP1, you adjust your sell limit to 30 pips above. Meaning 1853. <coughs> So your SL is 10 pips only. Get it? Or you just delete the sell limit even if you miss out on the TP1. Because why TP1 can be dangerous? Because TP1 is a buy potential zone. Who knows if the buyers that entered after the drop at TP1, because this is gold, guys. It's very fast. Entered from here will just burst through everything. So don't change the market. Delete the sell limit if it, if it has hit my TP1. You get me? So there are two types of trades. If I'm giving the signal at US session, 90% of the time, it will happen instantly because I'm waiting for the reversal. But let's say the, the, the signal is in the euro session. Sometimes volume is not strong. So it's just moving sideways like that, like this, like that. So as time goes on, probability changes, outcomes changes. So this is why sometimes we can float for so long sideways and then the closing of euro session, boom, it goes in the wrong way. In the particular moment that I gave the signal, it was accurate. But I would have seen M1, M5 broke here and there. But I cannot be like saying, cut now. Enter again. Get me? You guys will be very angry. The stress level I will get out of 900, only 100 will understand. 800 will be simply saying this. Mr. Black Sheep, fuck you. Do you even know how to give signal? If you are not certain, please don't give signal. Fuck you. When you say cut just now, I was scared. So I didn't enter back when you say re-enter. Fuck you. This is 90% of you fuckers. This is 90% of you. <laughs> so in the end, I'll be like, fuck you back. I'm going to stick to my SL and TP. So if you hit SL, you hit SL. If you full margin, you skip it. Simple as that. I don't want to stress my life. Because nine, 800 will say, fuck you, 900, only 100 will understand the fuck I'm doing. You think I'm that stupid to not be able to see that this thing will spike like crazy? But I'm just like, you know what? I just hope it doesn't reach my SL. That's about it. 
But from M1 and M5, we can cut already knowing it's gone wrong. But of course, it causes a lot of baboons to go angry and I do not like to be in a very angry environment. So in, this, in the end, I just let it hit SL and recover later. So you guys get me? I don't want to drag too long of your time. It's already been like three hours. But so far, how's your experience with um, this segment of teaching? Do you guys see the difference now? Like, is it applicable for your day-to-day -day now? I need a review of 900 people. So let's go. I want to share in the group, the video. Because we still have three more classes to go. So for every class, it will take around one to two weeks for you to learn, to apply. It cannot simply <clears throat> be like, teach me all five. Because you have to experience the knowledge first, test the knowledge, see the rights and the wrongs. From there, you slowly develop a better understanding. So my classes would be every one to two weeks before we go into the deeper level because this is supposed to give you the time to be able to practice. But if you baboons wake up every day in the morning just focusing to fucking um, wanting to make money only, then it's very hard for you to progress. <clears throat> Faisal, sure, Faisal is a VVIP client, so we will invite him to speak. Where is Faisal? Bro, your name is not here, bro. Oh, it's S. S <clears throat> What's up, bro? Hey, buddy. Thanks for unmuting me. No worries, bro. I just have a question, bro, because, you know, I do have a, a two accounts. I have a very small account, which is like yeah. $500, and I have another one, which is $5,000. And I yeah. only trade on that one, like 0 0.10, 0 0.20. I don't full margin because I okay. find that very stupid. I never do that. <laughs> I have a question, though, bro. So sometimes, you know, most of your signals hit TP1 and TP2, and I've already put... I take profit at one and two and three. And sometimes it does not touch uh, TP3. So while that TP3 is running, whether it's in loss or uh, like it doesn't go into profit, when do I decide to cut my loss at TP3? Okay. Because I, because I could leave TP3, it could be in profit and I could leave it and then it could just reverse and hit my SL. Okay, perfect question. Um, this is, now I ask you back. In your perspective, what is TP1? What is TP2? What is TP3? <clears throat> well, I, well I basically, I basically, I'm following your TPs. So I'm, mm. I'm, I'm following your TPs. So like, more, so like, I like sometimes like I get confused and like I cut my loss early because and I cut my loss and then oh, okay, it hit TP3, and sometimes I leave it and you know it goes and hits SL. So I'm having a problem at TP3 only. Okay, so it's like this. In order for TP3 to happen, it needs to be a full H4 reversal. Okay. Meaning, let me show you an example. <clears throat> Let's take gold. Where is gold? Okay. Now, I want you to count with me. Let's, this is H4, okay? Let's take yeah. an average H4 with average volume. We're not talking about a breakout, we're talking about a normal day. So the maximum distance between the opening of a H4 and the ending of the H4 is usually around 70 to 60 pips Yes. on average. That's correct. Yes, that's so correct. meaning, first criteria for TP3 to be hit is that it needs to require a lot of volume for that to happen. Yes. Secondly, we must make sure we are not stuck in a sideway. Yes, of market. course. 
for example, like from this period of time till this period of time, it's a side way. Yes. So yes. let's say 90% of the time, we won't get the entry up here. We won't get yes. the entry. Yes. But we have to factor, this is the real reversal point. So yes. our entry is usually in the middle, somewhere mm -hmm. here, because it's after the confirmation. That's why yeah. when confirmation has been done, you will see the signal doesn't take long to hit TP. When there is no yes. confirmation, yes. you can get a sharp entry up here, but it might take a really long time for it to hit TP. Or might even go yes. worst case scenario and kapoom, holy shit. So yeah, because because basically what I do, Mr. Black Sheep, all the time is for, for me personally, yeah. I find it safer for me to aim for TP1 and TP2. I normally don't go for TP3. Okay. To be honest, I will always close my positions 90% of it at TP2. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. So if you want to hold for TP3, it's very simple. The moment it enters or touches TP2, you put it on break even. If it comes back to your entry, 95% is going to burst above the entry level. 95%. Yes. Because why? Like I said, we did not get the sharpest reversal point. So now yeah. it will go higher. It, that's why I hate re-entry in goals. Yes. Because in goal, you need to be in one direction, you out. If yeah. it comes back to the local, Location that you sell 95% of the time, if you press buy, you'll be in profit. Confirm. Because then it yes. has cleared the lower tone, it will go higher. So next yes. time you try, if it hits TP2 and then it comes back to your entry price, you try put 0 0.01 buy. That's what I that's what I do. Just yeah, to, to, to take the direction. Just to get a feel of it. Yeah. Because let's say your account is big. So 0 0.01 is just pennies for fun. Yeah, because, no, because normally what I do, like you just explained earlier about the sell limit, like mm. I told you, I'll only go 0 0.10 or 0 0.20 because I'm not going to risk a big lot. So basically, I would put my sell limit like maybe like 10 pips before the SL and there I would go like, okay, two lot. And if it comes right. back to TP1, that's a lot of money for me. Correct. But if it hits, if it hits SL, I'm not bothered in losing $200. Correct. Because the risk is, the, the reward is bigger than the risk. Correct. So my yeah, that's what I've been doing you, the whole time. My advice to you is um, if you do the sell limit method, meaning if I give sell now 1850, but you waited for 1852, 90%, you just put in your head, if I hit SL, I, I'm hitting SL lesser than everyone else. But if it starts moving in the right direction, like Mr. Black, it's a lot of money. Thing, huh? It's a lot of money. Yeah, the problem that's what I've been doing since fuckers, I got that. Uh, yeah, bro, yeah. like these people, they will enter after it has run 15 pips. If it hits TP1, they will sell at TP1. I'm just like, where's your logic, guys? Uh, bro, I'll tell you a story, bro. There's one guy, there's one guy in this group who he yeah. doesn't really mention his name. He's a friend of mine. Bro, that day when the gold broke out, you know, when it was Ooh. 8 to 7, it just shot up. Yeah. Bro, he lost like, Eleven thousand dollars because he margined his account, and I was like, "Bro, it's your own fault." Holy shit! I, bro, I told him, "Bro, you know, but to him, eleven thousand dollars is like, like, uh, like for you, bro, one thousand dollars. It's fine. Yeah. Doesn't matter." But he was like, "You know, uh, I full margin. Well, like, that's your own fault. If Correct. you want to do stupid thing like that, if you want to do something like that, and you want to uh, make mistakes, own up to it. It's no one else's fault. It's not my fault, Black Sheep's fault, or anyone's fault. It's your own fault." You literally tried to go all in into the market. You will expect that situation. For you guys, of course. All, my advice is full margin is definitely fine. But the whole idea of full margin is literally using every single bit of margin given to you by the broker to make money. Hence, you do not use your big account to full margin. My biggest account for full margin is 5,000. If I keep compounding the account with successful full margin, even if I lose it at 20,000, I didn't lose 20,000. I lost 5,000 and I lost 15,000. Exactly. So you guys all, not you, but 800 of them, holy fuck, man, you guys have no logic. If you can't afford two accounts, trade using your brain. If you can afford 5,000 to full margin, 
better you do it at five hundred dollar because five hundred dollar will know, become two thousand. Honestly, bro, like I'm not the one that's sending the signals. You're the one that's sending the signals. And sometimes, like I get messages from some people in this group, and they're crying and complaining because <laughs> Mr. Black Sheep went on a fifteen win streak and then he lost one trade. And they start complaining. I'm like, guys, come on, chill, bro. What, what's going on? You forgot the uh, 15 days winning streak, and because you lost some money, you're gonna cry. Get over it. It's fine. Exactly. Yeah. But this okay, you guys need to know, like, like, like Faisal, he's making good money, and he's he has a very good money management concept with his five thousand dollar account. He can lose one thousand and text me laughing, and two hours later he'll text me. Now he's up three thousand. Stuff like that. But if you guys can't do what he does. You don't have the capacity like he does. Then trade wisely. That's my only advice to you guys. Because first year of trading, you will not become a millionaire. Even your first five years, you wouldn't become a millionaire. But when you have reached the level of you are able to do so, like I said, my first eighteen days of January, I have made more than ninety eight thousand dollars. I will withdraw it this week, and I will show you guys the withdrawal of ninety eight thousand. In the first eighteen days of January, how much I, did I, I lose? I lost you know, three honestly, times only I, since in since December. Five thousand. I just I, yeah. You know, honestly, sorry, sorry to cut you off. I just want guys mm. to understand here that the people that the three thousand people that are in this group, they're not they're not Mister Black Sheep, they're not Faisal. So my salary is twenty thousand dollars a month. I don't <laughs> mind to go. I don't mind to go in, brother, and uh, lose some money. So you guys really have to manage your account the proper way because if you end up bursting your account really guys tough luck it's your own fault it's not my fault or mr black sheep's fault or whatever like don't trade your 100 dollar account like my five thousand dollar account it's not gonna work yeah. <coughs> i don't mind gonna... floating like sometimes i'll be honest i'm not gonna lie sometimes mr black sheep puts an sl of 40 40 pips i don't go 40 pips i go i go 50 because i myself am willing to lose that exactly and I will be honest, that day when it was 1827, where you had your stop loss at 1828, I put it at 1828.5 and it backfired on me. But I knew the risk. I never came to you and complained and said, oh, look, uh, blah, blah, blah. I accepted it. <laughs> it's my own fault. Correct. Yeah. <clears throat> no, no, he's not talking big. He is actually earning a lot, guys. And his account is big. Like, I can see your account sizes under me. So he can do it because he, uh, he is able to deposit money. He's not showing off. This is the reality of trading. Like, for example, I know one more guy, Afan. He's, he's working in Dubai as well. He earns like, what, 1925k dollars a month. That guy just full margin all the fucking time, $2,000. But in three or four winning streaks, he recovered all his losses in crypto. So it's possible. But for the majority of you, chill. Don't, don't, don't become baboons and chase the market like crazy. And please withdraw your profits, please. I beg you guys. Yeah. I will show please you 98,000 withdrawal in January in the first 18 days. I haven't withdrawn yet. So, like I said, I just need to work three to four months of the first quarter of the year, which is when the market is at its primus momentum, meaning possibility of losing is every day. But the profitability of losing in January till April is way more beneficial than losing in December, for example. Because the movements January till April gives you is really strong, really big, really easy for you to flip your account. So from here onwards, now you guys have learned one more new additional knowledge on the engulfing method. I need you guys to really devote your time to mastering first the drawing. Second is to not take trades on your own aggressively, but instead use it to observe and create your own consistency, your own strategy to be using this knowledge. Some people have different strategies. Everyone has the same knowledge. So some guys, they are smart. They'll be like, okay, black sheep rarely gets it wrong, but I'm not going to take 40 pips. I'm going to sell limit at 10 pips. If I miss the trade, I miss the trade. But if I, if I get the trade, for example, let's take gold. 
I saw here 1837, I gave the SL 1842. If I added 10 more pips to 1843, it wouldn't have hit. But what if there was a smart guy that put the SL 1841, meaning put sell limit 1841. We were shouting, woohoo, hit TP3. But this motherfucker will get the sharpest point with almost zero float up to 120 pips. Sometimes you need to be a good signal taker as well. I should be a good signal provider. You take or become a good signal taker. When you are good at what you do and I am good at what I do, hence you will be making money consistently. Okay? Everyone here clear. Don't be yeah, a just stupid. You know, uh, uh, just the, the other thing, Mr. Black Sheep, you know, yeah. uh, just like I'd, I'd appreciate like guys here, like, you know, for me, basically my technique is like, if I do, if I go into profit, like, you know, we've hit TP1 and we're in like, okay, we're in uh, 30 pips or 35 pips profit. I will always set uh, break even, even if we've not hit TP2, I will always set break even at TP1 because Correct. if it comes back and touches TP1, I've not lost anything. Correct. Yeah, okay, so what like, does it mean by break even at TP1? You guys modify your SL to the price of TP1 after hitting your take profit of TP1. Ex exactly. Which is on YouTube because a lot of people obviously don't know what break even means. Correct. <laughs> Just go onto YouTube, they'll show you how to do it. It's, it's very simple. You have two haters. I'm, I'm not sure why do they hate you. Arslan Fazal and... Ikifa Benedict, there's something wrong with the two of you. You guys somehow have envy feelings towards Faisal, which I'm not sure what's you guys' issue, but he is sharing good knowledge and he is making good money in trading. I can see his account and it's going well. For those of you that are asking me to mute him, you have to know he makes more money than you. <laughs> exactly. I, mean, I don't want to show off. I want to say Alhamdulillah and I have a good job. And I could live without, uh, without this trading. I don't have an issue. But yeah. I'm just saying that a lot of people here are ignorant. And if you make mistakes like that, I think the only person that you have to blame is yourself. I am someone that made my account from $500 to $17,000. And I gave it to one guy to do account management. And he lost it in two days. So okay. when I'm talking about account management and setting break even and stuff like this, I'm talking from experience of losing a big amount. Exactly. So you guys need to learn from people who have lost money. So he's sharing real knowledge that I personally agree. So if you guys disagree, you guys can go fuck yourself. At the end, at the end of the day, I, I'm only here to help you. At the end of the day, you win money, uh, you lose money. There's no benefit for me. Exactly. I, and I then guys, it. he can sound like a show off if he wants to. I'm a show off myself, but I got something to show. He has something to show. A show off is not an issue if you have something to walk the talk. So, <laughs> you guys, I'm actually, are not, I'm, I'm actually not checking the chat because I muted it, so I don't care what everyone, anyone is writing. To be honest, yeah, but no <laughs> worries, bro. This is normal. I get this kind of shit every day. Yeah, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. For me, it's per, it's per, it's more. There's more preference for me to go to TP1 and take TP1, TP1 and TP2. And sometimes yeah, it goes to 100 pips and 150 pips, 200 pips, and I lose out, but so what? Correct. So now I want you guys to try this. When I give a signal, put it 20 pips above my entry or below my entry of sell limit or buy limit. If it hits TP1 before it triggers your pending order, you delete the order. Like, don't text me, can I still entry? No. Because I do not like to do re-entries. My strategy is simple. I don't trade 10 times a day. I trade only 2 to 3 times a day. If, I, if there's 3, I give 3. If there's 2, there's 2. Most of the time, I will target minimum 40 pips for my trades. So there are times if I entry, I didn't get the TP3. Because from my entry point to the TP3 point of 60 pips didn't, didn't hit. But some guys who put sell limit instead of entering on instant order will manage to get 60 pips when it hits TP2. So it's just becoming a good signal taker. And from here, you will see your trade starts to improve. If you guys want to full margin, it's not wrong. 
but don't do it with the expectation of going to win 90% of the time. But just know, one successful full margin can bring $100 to $1,000 in two trades maybe, depending on how hardcore your full margin is. For me, I will press every single bit of the screen. That's my style, not advisable. So is there anything else, guys, to, to, to tonight? Because if not, we have been almost four hours, so there's nothing more important than you just getting back to the charts, focus on the knowledge, do your own mappings, and Miss Lara Summers are going to start a series called Check It Out, whereby every day she will pick a pair that she will start map mapping one time in the morning. She will update it in the evening and one more at US session to see what happened. And then a new pair tomorrow. Based on her markings, do not enter your own position. She is just here to help you become disciplined in learning and observing what has happened and what will happen. That's about it. Signals are from me or Mr. Fly only. But for the currencies, um, we are waiting for the reversals of weekly to truly happen because then we'll start trading even more hardcore. Because I told Mr. Fly, the market condition for currencies are not too good right now. Hence, we just avoid it for now. Okay. And then um, for the giveaway, I think we'll do another live session tomorrow or Tuesday for the giveaway because that's like 40 or 20 people's name to go on the giveaway. So right. <clears throat> yeah, people keep texting me about the about the raffle. I'm like, I'm not Mr. Black Sheep's assistant, guys. I don't know. Yeah, I'll I'm give you the money, you. please. Don't worry, guys. I'll give you the money. But okay, and then there's another thing. Mr. Fly is just super stressed with you guys. No, especially you have to understand. Black sheep <clears throat> um, win streak is quite insane in general. So if a person comes in and wanting to give a signal, and if it hits SL he will become super pressured because you guys have been people that are not really accustomed to SLs, which is bad. So we wait for the bigger time frame confirmations for currencies to start trading more happily. <clears throat> and the giveaway will do it. Don't worry, boys and girls. I'm just tired to do all that stuff right now. And please don't bug Miss Summers with your flirtatious techniques. She is off the market. Don't bother. She is here to help you guys with your progression of a trader. <laughs> Not here to be calling you and having booty calls for you guys to be enjoying your nights, okay? So I think that's about it for today. We have dragged this quite long as well. Any other questions, guys? that you guys want to cover? Mr. Black Sheep's jobs to provide signals. In the end, I just want to say that I love you. Okay, um, that's about it. Hope you guys And I cannot do that. I cannot give all this. Can you give me prediction for gold? I don't. I don't play Mr. Prophecy. I literally, I literally am just doing this day to day. I take my day day to day. I don't. I don't fucking predict my movement because if I start doing predictions, I'm gonna be a gambler. I trade what I see. If it respects, it respects. If it does not respect, it does not respect. Okay, nice. Bye bye. Good night. Love you all. all right, thanks, Mr. Black Sheep. See you, buddy. <clears throat> no worries, bro. Happy trading tomorrow. Please yes, give sure. the knowledge to start tracking your own trades as well. I recommend you to just monitor other signal channels for signals. And then, when, because I don't trade currencies, for let's say if a good channel is giving sell now euro USD, you use his signals to study. Is there any cell like Mr. Black Sheep's 
knowledge. Honestly, the Wix, uh, the Wix one is pretty good. I've gone in a few of them and the currencies are good. And there's another one called that I'm subscribed to that is called Masters uh, FX or VIP, something like that. And yesterday, yeah. uh, last week, they went to like on the 3000 uh, plus pips winning streak on the currency. They don't trade gold, only currencies. Okay, I think you guys can go to my disciples, my students' channel, Wix, Wix 50. Yes, they're very she's good. My, she's yeah. my student. Both of them are my students. So I would say their signals are okay. But if I were you, when they say sell now, I wouldn't rush. But I would use their direction. Because so far, she's not a good signal provider for now. But she has good directions. So if she says sell now, Euro cat, for example, you just sell limit 30 pips above for entry and then you put the SL 40 pips above. You will hit all TP3, confirm. Wix 50, W-I-C-K-S 50. She's my, one of my old students like three years ago. So they give pretty good currency signals, but never fucking take her signals on the spot. Monitor the pair that she's looking. Her directions are right. Um, try to get a sharper entry. 20 pips TP. TP1, you take it. Don't, don't try to go TP2, TP3 because I can tell you guys one thing. 90% of the signal providers do not have the ideology to go for higher TPs. They just want to secure 10, 20 pips to make their channel seem very active. Woo, hit TP. Woo, hit TP. Woo, hit TP. But 90% of you, if you try to follow their pace, you're going to get wrecked. So instead, TP1, you take and go. Take and go. With me, you can try to hold to TP2, TP3. Because I always focus on TP2, TP3. Okay? Um, it's weeks 50, guys. It's weeks 50. Telegram gives a time loss of some second when you give a sell. Yes, I've, I've realized that as well. Like, the delay, I really cannot do anything about it, guys. Like, if you miss it, you miss it. Don't fucking chase the market. I cannot ask Telegram to make my message go faster. And then you have to imagine this goal. And when I give, I give upon confirmation. So if I give upon confirmation, I mean, it will take less than five minutes to go and hit TP usually. Neo wants to speak. Where is Neo? <clears throat> Hello, bro. What's up, Hello, bro? Hello, bro. What's up, bro? <laughs> How <are you> <laughs> ah, nothing to do. Yeah. So, nothing bro. Yes. What happened uh, last week? Uh, uh, too many provider uh, hit SL2. Okay? It's not your your fault because uh, one more thing is about the uh, news will come okay. on the Wednesday, I think so. Wednesday? Okay. On the Wednesday, I think the uh at the US market. Ah, correct. Okay, then uh, what's the problem for the traders uh on that time? They chase uh the price, okay. Correct. They chase the price and then try to uh revenge the market with sell. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. Correct. I am correct or not? Correct. Correct. Okay, but some of the traders wait. Waiting the, the best price to sell, and then the uh, on the uh, Thursday I think uh, you you give a signal for sell right, yeah, because uh they they want the the they want the zone for sell, this one. that's why that's why I hit all the way entry until I full the margin. <laughs> Two thousand become fifteen thousand guys. Yeah. This so, area. Yeah. Because too many, too many person uh PM uh that DM uh how I make it. First first of all, you must have a uh, knowledge about the market first. You Correct. just uh you don't you don't you just don't follow the signal hundred percent. The signal is the signal. You get the 20 pip, you you must close uh, close. Because you you don't have a, you don't don't have any idea you have don't have any strategy, but what they, they ask me why you can hold uh uh Mr. she give her for forty or twenty pips but you why you can hold hundred pips 
because I, I have a knowledge, then I have a strategy. So this was like, if you full margin, guys, this is how we do it. The whole yes. screen will sell like this yellow line. Black Why she, we Black Shika, Black Shika, somebody. Yeah, I'm from Malaysia. I'm from Malaysia, bro. I'm from I'm from Malaysia. Yeah, I met Neo at Singapore before. Yes. So, what happened at the market the last last week? Too many uh traders uh chase the the price, the market. They they have no passion and first and then they don't have a knowledge and strategy how to trade. Like uh Mr. Fly, Mr. Fly uh, uh speak. Uh he say they had uh some some of traders lost uh 11k right 11k okay why he lost 11k they have they uh, the, the person don't have a strategy they just entry and treaty but then <laughs> he don't know what he do <laughs> bro the last week when i was telling you when the breakout happened the guy that lost 11k bro he was floating that, bro. And I was like telling him, please, please close it at 2,000 minus, 3,000 yes. minus. It looks like it's yes. going to break out. And he decided not to listen to me. And then boom, yes. 11K. Yes. That's your own fault. But I did some, some of the person who direct uh, message me. Then he, he, he need my, uh, my guide to trade. Then I, I just tell him, you hold the position until one, say, 1832. But he closed one one eight three seven, and then the price be going down. We drop again. <laughs> so I I I tell him, you must trust me. Okay, this is my my strategy. Follow the you must first follow the strategy with Mr. Brachit. The signal will pro is uh, proven. Mr. Brachit, the signal will proven. But you have a strategy. How to be a good signal taker? Yes. For Neo. Maybe if he's working 24-7 also, he will trust in my signals. He would know how to take my signals. So sometimes, yes. guys, you just have to see me as a person that shortens your effort in the market. Meaning you can still go your, do your day job. You can still take care of your kids. But when I give a signal, now you can start to monitor the charts. If yes. I give and it takes it too bad, don't chase. But there will be always time for you to re-enter higher, get a better price point. Because for me, when I give a signal, I cannot cut at two pips. But if you know me on live trade, like Neo knows me, for example, and sometimes 5, 10 pips, I will cut. And then I wait 30 pips higher. Entry again, and I, I cut. But as a signal provider, I cannot be doing that because you do not know what you're doing. Hence, yeah. you'll be scolding me. Fuck yeah. you, bro. Fuck you. Yeah, is it true, bro? Because, because this uh, is gold, guys. Yeah, this is gold. Bro, some of the guys, some of the guys here, bro, are crying on minus ten dollars, minus <laughs> twenty dollars. What will happen? What will happen yeah. when they see minus two thousand, three thousand, four thousand? What will they do? <laughs> Correct. It will be too much for them. I think they will have a heart attack. It will yeah. have confirmed. I, what I saw, why, what, what happened uh, last week? I got uh, too many uh, people with uh, send message to me. How you can uh, grow your account to k from uh, from two two thousand goals to ten k withdraw? I just say, you you willing to lose? How many? How many uh, money you you willing to lose with trade? They will say no money. I don't want to lose. <laughs> fucking <laughs> shit! If you if you don't want to lose the fucking the money with the trade, you no need to trade. <laughs> That's what I want to say. That's the trade is a high risk, you know. Any the any trade. button you press is risk. Yeah. So you need to know there will always be risk. Yeah. Is and it then, true? You guys do not follow like Neo. He has traded gold for a very long time, four years maybe now this year. Yeah. So from and there, just trade the uh, gold only. Gold only. Oh, and this guy, full margin only. 24-7, full margin only. 
the beauty bro, of Neo, 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 bro, you're crazy, man. I swear to God, like, bro, I'm the one that has money, and I and I'm not because, doing this for Bro, shit. because I'm willing to lose, bro. Yeah, yeah of course, of course. The money. That, that's, that the risk. Per- I, I at think. the end, of, at the end of the day, brother, it's personal preference. You know, like yeah. if you want to do that, because, it's up to you. Because if you take a high risk, you get a high return. You know, one thousand percent. I agree with you. Yeah, but you you want to uh, low risk, but you get a low return. Yeah. <laughs> Simple as that. <laughs> yeah. Simple as that. So, what 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 other than other traders score? Uh, Mister Breakshit hit twenty pip or forty pips. They will score you like oh, Mister Breakshit like that. Like, everything like. So I just uh I just look like uh what happened to other people, sir. Huh? They don't know. Uh, maybe a ten uh, signal Mr. Breaching provide only two times hit SN. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So you you don't have a money management properly, right? Hmm. That that, that, that what, what I see, lah. Right? So you guys the, the chill. Field. You guys just chill, like. Do it at your own pace. Don't follow different people to achieve different outcomes. What I'm telling you guys right now, the knowledge I'm providing with you is everything that I use. There's still three more lessons to go, but at every turning point of a lesson, fucking master the topic. So if you have not even put in the work to watch and learn the episode one, how are you going to progress in the episode two? You guys are going to struggle now. So now, do not procrastinate and delay your potential journey of success and make it even later than where it should be or when it should be start putting in the work to become good traders you can follow anyone's signals i don't care but when you do it with knowledge you're not going to be very angry when it when it goes wrong because technically when you follow a signal you agree with the person so don't be the kind of guy that only agrees when he is right so But you can blame people who does not teach you, who does not educate you, who does not provide you with knowledge, only with t- signals that hit SL. Maybe you're you're following a stupid ass fucking guy, maybe. But if you are following me, I will make sure you learn fucking well. And from there, I want you to be able to take your own trades. Okay, there's one more person that wants to speak. Five, five, five. I'll invite you. It's really about just attitude, guys. This kind of thing really doesn't need much to make you better. But somehow you guys are making things harder than it should be. Okay, what's up, five five five? Oh hi, Mr. Blas. You can hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, it's just a basic question, though. Like, because I'm a scalper, so I use the fifteen minute for the direction, and then I trade five minutes and one minute. Although I do love. Uh, your strategy so i've been trying mm-hmm. to learn it for quite some time and you always mention about when the four hour candle is about to open i was just right. wondering like what is uh your how do you know that it's about to open like what's the indication okay where are you from by the way are you from thailand oh no from philippines oh philippines so that's five 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 means ha 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 No, not really. It's just a number. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that's a good question. Okay. What was the question about the H four? Right. Why? Yeah. Like when it's about to open, because you always tell us, for example, okay. when you send a signal, and then you say, "Oh, wait for something, something like this." You're anxious because our four candle is about to open. Okay. So this is good question because then you can understand me even on a more personal level on how I take my trades. Approaching a new H four. Or approaching the closing of the current H4 is a very um, risky moment to be in the market. Meaning, if you are in the market before an opening or right after an opening of a H4, usually it's plus minus one hour before and after. You have to start monitoring again. The due to the opening of H4, new H4 volume will come in. Different time frames contains different volume. For example, let me show you. Um, oh, good question. I like it. 
start broadcast. Okay, for example, now let's talk about M5. The average movement of an M5 is technically around 20 to 15 pips. This is yeah. the average movement of M1, M5. So as a scalper, this should be your take profit target. Yeah, that is true. I always um, do either one-to-one -one or the most is one-to-three risk to reward. Correct. But the problem is with when you trade on M1 and M5, especially in gold, do you have to understand one thing? Well, what's your name? Um, you can call me Betsy. Bethany. Betsy. Dexy. Yeah. Okay, Dexy. The, the difference between it, as a scalper, especially in gold, the risk to reward is never actually good because you have to understand one thing. Gold moves in the bigger time frame movement in general. So for every trade you take for 10, 20 pips, you are exposing yourself in the market. Every minute, let's say you, take, you trade a one minute candle. You might be so focused in this smaller picture that you are consist consistently exposing yourself to a high level of risk. Because every minute you spend, you are closer to the opening of a new H4, to the opening of a new H1, whereby during opening and closings of H4, you will see immense volume will flow in most of the time. For example, okay. during this spike that went fucking high, it happened 30 minutes before the H4 was closing around here. No, one hour before. One candle, two candle, three candle, 190 minutes. But in this 190 minutes, it fucking flew 90 pips. As a scalper, you will get wrecked. Yeah, and that, that is look true. Look at this, this side. Same thing. It is the opening of the Euro Session H4. 100, 126 pips. So as a scalper, I can guarantee you, you're not making any money. You can tell me you hit your TPs, but I can assure you, your withdrawals are not that great in Forex. You have to agree with me on that without me knowing your account balance. Unless you are a super disciplined trader that really withdraws your profit on a profit basis, then it's a different story. Because I've learned it's fun to think we can trade the M1 and M5 for fun, but it's wrong. Scalping is a good um, skill set to have in filtering your entry for the big movement to happen. What do I mean by that? When I take my entry, yeah, I focus. I follow you. Because, yeah. uh, for example, when I was scalping, I do I follow the direction for the 15-minute candle. So, for example, yeah. if I see the direction is on a sell, so I will look for entries on the one-minute or five-minute candle, and then I'll just do sell all the time. But yeah. at the same time, I want to learn, like, for example, when it's, like, Euro market open or U.S. market open, then I don't Correct. scalp because that shit, like, it'll just blow my account. Correct. It'll blow in an instant. But with your habit of scalping, you would start to see some certain patterns for a buy or a sell. Use that knowledge to use it upon the opening of a new H4. You will see your trade starts to get fucking sharp because after the opening of a new H4, if your direction was right, your M1 setup will give you 40 to 60 pips confirm. But okay. if you take your M1 trades not in the timing that is close to the closing or opening of the H4, you're going to get wrecked. Understand? Yeah, yeah, I understand. Like, okay, how long have you been trading? Because 90% of people I meet has the same characteristic like you. For about two years. But the thing is, it's like these days, I can't always monitor my trade. So when I was really scalping hard like last year, I'm on in, in front of the computer for like 24 7 well like mostly euro and u.s session correct yeah so like, okay can can, can i see your, to... can, can i see your account uh, I, like, I want i want i want people that. to see scalpers account like can i can you share your screen 
Oh, I'm I'm not on my computer right now. So you can you can use your phone. Now. I'm trying to I'm trying to show my account though. No, no, it's not about the account sizes. I just want to show everyone this is the problem with scalping because your balance of your TP or SL. I want I just want everyone to see that. Is it possible? Uh I'd rather not because it's shitty. Like my performance <laughs> this this month is so shitty. So I'd rather not. It's fine. It's not about your performance. Like literally, your performance is the reflection of your attitude of doing this scalping methodology can we not it's not okay i can't i can't show it it's embarrassing yeah. just show it nah nah it's okay i'll make no, you host thank you so no okay, you no 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 please don't no please don't please 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 no please it's don't. a good sharing experience like legit no. you are uh, host uh, I can't, I can't. <laughs> no, even if it's like a you. fucking $10 man, account, it doesn't matter. It's not a $10 account. It's okay. I, I, don't, I, I don't know. I don't Let me. Yeah, don't uh, be too anxious about this. Everyone will go through your face. I've been in your face. But I want to point out to sculptors. This is a big issue. How can you make me host though? I've, I've like, made you host. So you can just press the share content and then you can share your screen. Oh, okay. Okay, oh, wait. Let me open it up. I'll show one of my failed funded accounts now. <laughs> yeah. So Everyone this account is about is to what? die because I've literally wrecked it. Don't so worry. where are you right now? Mm. It's okay if you blow your account. Can you see Everyone my account? Can you see my account yeah. now? Can you see? Yep. Okay, so I'll go to. So this is like a hundred k funded account, and about okay. I'm about to blow it. So. But... Um. Let's start from the top. I was doing okay in the beginning. Can you see it? Yep. Yeah, but yeah, it, this is my fault because I okay. saw that the no, market no, no, this was is good. reversing. This is good. Okay, okay now I saw that the market was reversing, but I didn't close it because I was very sure of the stone and it was just like a liquidity grab. So it was literally 10 pips above my SL. So had I moved my SL, ugh, so fucking annoying so that kind of wrecked me and then the other was just like revenge revenge yep. trading yeah okay so if everyone but can see it yeah you like to sculpt right okay never mind just scroll scroll through scroll through just scroll it yeah because it's habit this is this is the 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 result of trying to become a sculptor so what do you guys see in general what do you guys see and this is the point, um, because this is the new funded account. I still have another one, but I'm very um careful with that this is something that it's okay. And okay. um no, it's okay. Then, like we are here to learn, and I like people with mistakes. Without the mistakes, you're not gonna learn. As yeah, a sculptor, I'm, you will first develop the habit to sculpt, meaning when you enter a trade, you enter it with a mindset to achieve a 10, 20 pip result or outcome but if you consistently doing that you will start to see every time it hits your sl you will lose so much that but losing is okay with your sl but the problem is when you approach it again as a scalper your recovery rate will be too fucking long before you even recover your account because your yeah, but, approach or strategy yeah. is going to give you confidently 10 to 20 pips. Because yeah, you haven't built it, like, and developed the site to achieve that 60 pips, 100 pips kind of trade. So now, use what you know. But when I give a signal, 
you try filter it down to what you would do. Meaning, don't fight my direction. My direction is 90% correct. If I say sell, you look for the better sell with your M1 scalping technique. Then you will yeah. see your technique is going to get you 40 pips because now you have discounted your entry. You got, you got it at a better price than me. But then, doing that, your SL becomes way smaller. Never fight my okay, SL as well. Yeah. My SL is precise. If I say add 10 pips, add. If I say don't add, don't add. Adding 10 pips usually is only when market volume search is happening. Like a surge of volume. So 10 pips yeah. is a very small distance for it to hit. So I just give that space to breathe. So this is why, guys, do not become a scalper because one SL will take you a long time to recover due to your habit. Sometimes you might enter the trade. It can go 40, 60 pips, but you don't know. You are not sure. Will it go 20, 40 pips, 60 pips? But you are definitely comfortable with 20 pips. My issue now is, as a trader, I'm so confident in myself that every time I trade, I will believe it's going to hit TP3. That's the problem. So you guys use the balance between my weakness and your habits and make it into a better formula to create better success. So it's not about calling out their weaknesses because this is everyone. Don't laugh. Even 563 of you do this bullshit. So this bullshit happens. And like I said, she's still new. Two years into the market. What do you guys expect? If she's showing you 80 pips CP, you guys are going to be shocked. So the problem is people might not advise her. So the right people are people like me, proven. So like the rest of you, don't do this mistake. Okay? Yeah, have you passed the account before? You, yeah, I have several accounts. Mm. And then for this one, it's new. And I've been trying to just uh, like focusing on it trying to uh, keep it on positive so it just and everything just went south all the time and every like the first time I think that I've been hitting like constant SL it's just like a mind fuck for me so every mm. time my trade was in profit I closed mm. immediately I don't trust my gut anymore that it would hit uh. my TP and that kind of fucked me up like okay. immensely <laughs> This is what we call, um, from where I'm from, we call it as a trader's losing its tune or his or her tune. Be, be very attentive to this scenario because she used the word, I got scared. I'm not sure of my setups anymore and stuff like that. It happens. When you are out of tune, be very, very attentive to the emotional state of being you are in and you need to resolve it as quick as possible. Because don't be surprised, guys. I have a friend, a really good trader. He lost his tune. It took him one year and two months to get back on track. Every trade he took was losing like crazy. Not because he didn't have the knowledge. It was because he had crazy insecurities and doubts in their self. And it's normal. So, please... I'm trying to anyone else with, with crazy ass experience, share. I also lost my tune. I made 8K in one month, but I lose 12K. Exactly. Losing your tune is also normal. But two years into the market, still baby new. So chill. But how much have you yeah, wasted I, money on funding your account? Um, I think before I got my first funded last year, I've spent maybe around $2,500 on trying to get a funded Oof. account and then that was when i got my first one which is 100k um uh i reinvested it back to get more funded accounts so it's okay, okay. it's cool so i so still do have you do this alone one. or do you have a team that handles the I, do, I do it alone okay i don't and trust people <laughs> full-time full trader or part-time full-time uh, no side jobs no nothing Okay, so funding accounts are quite good for full-time traders because the returns are quite big if you pass. But yeah, that is don't, true. Like, don't deposit too much. 2,500 was already quite a lot. Yeah, and my problem was, for example, I try to be focused because sometimes greed comes in. So yeah. hey, when five, you're five, already five. made... Five, five, five. 
Yeah. Okay, can you invite um, Zach M on to go to participants? Because you're still host. Oh, I'm, I'm still host. You, you type in the participants, Zach M, ask him to unmute. So he's one of my students that successfully grew $700 to $15,000 USD in two months. But of course, he is Zach. a very experienced guy. Zach M. Zach M. Zach M, please share how did you do it with all these people around the world. So he's like, I think, what, 40, 50 plus years old, had a lot of experience as well. And he did something incredible, 700 in two months. No, actually less, I feel. But he didn't want to withdraw. <laughs> Zach M, wait. Did I invite the right person? I think it should be Zach M, yeah. Zach M, Zach. hello. Bro, come on, Zach M. This guy legit. $700 to $15,000 in two months. That's the thing. For example, I also like having my own account because mm. you can you have no rules to abide by. Unlike if it's funded, that you really have to cut your losses. Correct. Wait, oh. Oh, did I invite the wrong host? Sorry. I'll look for you again. Oh, Zach. Holy shit. Now it's on Zach. Zach. Z-A-K. -Z Please pass the host back to me, Zach. <laughs> Zach A-K. Zach A-K. Please pass me back the host. Can I, can I get back the host? How do I do this? Now, how, how do I do that? I think, um, okay, claim host. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Okay, then. Okay, then let me invite Zach and ask to unmute. Okay. This guy, legit guy. Legit. Hello. Oh, Zach and how Hello, are you? The, hello, Black Sheep. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hello, Mr. Black Sheep. How are yeah. you doing? This is your old friend, Zach M here. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, as you can see, last uh, I grew my account from seven hundred to I think fifteen thousand, right? Fifteen thousand. I have the video, bro. I will show that maybe. Hello. You always full margin it though. Hello. Yeah, yeah. We hear you. Yes. I am. Uh, okay. Uh, I did grow my account from seven hundred dollars to fifteen thousand, and. I didn't listen to your advice, <laughs> basically. <laughs> so, uh, unfortunately, I lost uh, the whole fifteen thousand. <laughs> so anyway, I I pick up myself again. But at the time, you were not around, yeah, uh, so I I kind of lost. So, uh, I I put back some. I I will depot some money, and. Because of your guidance and your, <laughs> your, I mean, I, I refresh back uh, uh, using your okay, black sheet. Guys, uh, Zach M, Zach M is an experienced So I managed to, to recover. Now the account is around 24,800. Hey, Zach M, do you still have the login to the account of the 17, the 15K? 17K? <laughs> uh, no, I, I'm using the... the 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 I think you have this uh the, the account with you because it is under your IB. Oh okay. No no I mean uh, can so you lock if you can see the, the, the balance now around twenty four thousand eight hundred. So bro, I, can I you show the account that you went three weeks from two thousand to twenty four thousand. So basically, you know, uh, I get my tune back uh, because uh, after I lost the fifteen thousand, I kind of. Lost and wandering around, you know, and hey, dude, suddenly dude. you you <laughs> group. <laughs> Zach M, boy, can you log into your account and then show the time you lost that money? Share your screen. Uh, I want to see the uh, loss. The loss. Loss. Okay, let me see. Eh? But wait, wait, wait. Let me see. Can I ask how long it took uh, you from the 700 to 15K and then okay. how I, I, long have you shared the you lost it? Press the have green share, the share content, not yet. 
Okay, let me see. Boleh tengok ke apa? It's okay guys. Zach M is a senior. We have to be patient. Wait. Oh wait, wait, Zach M. Let me make you host. Okay, then you can share. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Ah, okay. You can are. Can you see my screen? Okay, now you press, bro. Sorry, just now I didn't make you host. Uh, Blackheep, Mr. Blackheep, can you see, Not yet. see my screen now? Now you press, bro. Not yet. Just now I didn't make you host. Click on the share content on Zoom. Open your Zoom. There's a green button, share content. Okay. You... <laughs> no, can, can you see my account now? No. No, bro. Your screen is not shared. Oh, I need to share the screen, right? Ah, uh, correct. You, you go on That's Zoom, good. open Zoom, and then there is a green button besides participant. You are the host now, okay. Yeah. Press share right. content. So how do I, I open it? Okay. Can anyone see my screen now? Not yet, bro. Holy shit, what's happening? It's crazy, guys. This guy is crazy. He grew and didn't want to withdraw, but thank God he found his tune back <laughs> and he recovered. Okay, now we can see. Huh? Okay, okay. Okay, first, I want you guys to see how he takes his profit. So... Okay, this is... <laughs> this is balance is destroyed. <laughs> anyway, uh, okay, pick up again. Pick up again and lost up and down without Mr. Black Sheep. <laughs> uh, so this is a uh, okay, November is still a slum day. November is still a, I mean, slum period. This is where you 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 are gone for a few months. Yeah, I was on, I was resting, bro. <laughs> you are resting, and I'm struggling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, now now December still. Okay, now uh twenty fourth of November, still struggling. Ah, uh, December, a little bit, uh, I mean, so this is where the account is lost, all is lost, and now coming back again, so, okay. Oh, look at that, holy shit. <laughs> okay, that is now that. it's getting better. Uh, so this is the on the twenty first around one thousand. So basically the the balance now is
Yeah. Anyway, uh, it was a uh, uh, this. This is a account twenty four thousand eight hundred. Congratulations, bro! Fucking impressive. <laughs> you made it back. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Blackship. No Without worries, you, bro. I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Please withdraw your profit, bro. <laughs> uh, funny guy. I swear to God, guys. So now, do you see any full margin he did that like, was insane? Nothing, right? But so how did he do it? It was very simple, guys. One thing about Zack M that many does not follow is because Zack M really likes to break even, firstly. Okay? Second is, he will secure his profit at 10 pips usually. Meaning... Once it has run 10 pips, he would put break even at 10 pips, modify the SL at positive 10 pips. Because he understands when it's goal, you enter, if you are entering in the right moment, it usually has no pullback. And it would just go, 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 go. So he managed his losses really well after making a crazy amount of loss. But he tried to commit with an open TP concept. Meaning, he tries to push it 60 pips, 100 pips TP, 50 pips TP. So in two months, he grew 700 to 15,000. He lost it all. I think he grew it in October, if I'm not mistaken, September. Lost it all. He was smart. He didn't deposit big again. You saw his deposit was like 500, 100, stuff like that. Trying to get back his tune, trying to fill the market again. And then moving on later, he started going bigger. And in another two months, he recovered his loss of 17,000 and now is in profit of 24. So overall, he's probably up by nine, $10,000. No, actually more because he deposited 2,000. So he 10x his account from 2,000 USD to 24,000 USD. So what is the key here? The key is continuity. I saw someone say it. Fucking good. Meaning, are you able to be continuous in the market even after a setback? Meaning, if you wipe your account today, do you, can you deposit again later? That's the issue. For Zach M, he has the capacity. He is an experienced, wise old man, but young at heart. But his wisdom and his experience in the market did not make him fearful of the market. He re-entered the market with a positive, fresh mindset and tried to grow it again. So, when I say it's possible to make this kind of money, now do you guys see? It's, it's fucking possible. The problem is, if you start following Baboon, Rahul and friends, you are going to consistently lose because you are not able to make your own trades. So, like Zach M said, he was lost when, he, when I wasn't around. But did, that doesn't mean he couldn't have done it without me. He could have done it without me. It's just that probably his self-confidence after the loss wasn't as big. And when I came back into the picture with my signals, he has his knowledge. He just used me as an addition to his confidence. You guys get me? It's actually a process that takes time. And the time will come if you have the money to keep depositing. So don't be the fuckers that grow $50 to $2,000 and don't withdraw. Like I said, a trader like me will have its weeks, maybe days, maybe months of a win streak. But do not let the win streak make you forget that I am not the god of the market. When one stupid move enters the play, you are fucked. So what was Zach M's biggest mistake? If you saw when he was scrolling down, he managed his risk well back in the day. When it was red, it was like red $100, $50. But as his account started to grow bigger, he must have said to himself, you know what? My account is bigger now. 
so I can float bigger. So that's why you see him cutting at $1,000 in rate, $1,000 in rate. But the attitude that got him to where he was, there was no $1,000 in rate. $50 rate, he cut. $80 rate, he cut. Meaning 30, 40 pips, he cut. But how did he manage to float 0.25 up to $1,000? Because he broke his discipline. He broke the method that got him the money. Out of emotion. Out of overconfidence. This is the cycle or the internal cycle of a trader. So that I can't help. That is how you guys adapt with your own capacity. But like I said, a trader truly loses to the market if he never comes back and fight. That kind of guys will say Forex made me lose money. But guys like Zach M that can redeposit, guys like Neo that can redeposit, guys like Faisal that can redeposit, they can win back the market because firstly, they have the knowledge. Okay, Zach M, I want to call you back up. Unmute your mic. But I want you to, I will, I will ask you to unmute. But before that, know what you need to speak about. One thing about these people, they have a lot of signal channels they have to follow or they want to follow or they, are, they can follow because 24-7 on Facebook, their ads are coming up. What is one thing about the knowledge that I bring about to you guys that is really beneficial that should not make you jump around? So you have a lot of experience, bro. You have traded more than, what, 10, 15 years? So please share with them about the knowledge that we bring about. <clears throat> uh, hello, everyone. Okay, basically, uh, before, uh, before I met uh, Black Sheep, Mr. Black Sheep, you know. Okay, you I, can just call I, me Dika. <laughs> you know, I, I know about all this uh, uh, in the, most of indicators, you know, I, I basically trading for the last maybe thirty years. Huh? So basically, but when 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 I found uh, Mr. Black Sheep method, so basically I understand um, the area of value of this engulfing, eh? you know, because and then uh, the higher time frame, all this thing is is uh, I mean uh, beautifully crafted eh? to to to. To make sure, make your entering the position in confident, yeah. So basically, uh, initially I was not patient enough to wait the zone, you know. But uh, after you know, after I I understand eh, the the Mr. Black Sheep uh, method methodology and and understanding of the price action, eh, I basically uh, uh, you know. Yeah, like like uh, I think he he used the uh, four hours time frame. Right? I think he has a trademark H one four one last time, H one H four H one. So yeah, four H four H four H H. I forget now, Mister Black Sheep. Okay. Anyway, uh, basically, uh, is is I mean, uh, it, you cannot go wrong once you you and you can predict the 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 next uh, H four candle right? and also the 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 build up of the week uh, the I think you're not in that in that level yet because the the lesson is not reached at this moment the new the, I mean the, this uh this new clusters is not reached at that level but sooner or later you will you will learn uh, how to I mean the the importance of uh area of value of uh h4 but basically i i i i uh i also uh i i have uh, many many strategy also to identify eh? but it is according to you but what once we 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 i mean we back up the 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 level that uh mr black sheep method eh? So then we uh, added another uh, like Fibonacci or moving averages. Eh? So that one you you will see eh, that uh, how accurate the the I mean uh, the setup eh? the setup, especially on the currencies. Eh? But 
right now <laughs> I'm into goal so need <laughs> okay uh, okay yeah, so that, that, that's where I, I I start to recover from I think uh, in January so after a heavy loss in in December uh, but anyway uh, uh, Mr Blackshear also informed us uh, that December is not a good time to trade uh, so uh unfortunately i don't listen to to, to his advice eh? so basically january is the best time so that's not how many to pull back eh, from the slump january till april bro you call me okay. like easy so even if you lose this time that's all i can share <laughs> perfect bro yeah okay. go back to mr blackship thank you okay so basically what zach m was trying to say is simply simple guys Number one is what I'm teaching you guys is a fundamental understanding to identifying high volume and liquidity price points whereby reversals can potentially happen. So people like Zai M, they already have the knowledge and experience in trading. That is what he said about Fibonacci, moving average, stochastics, meaning if you master the naked chart first, so I trade naked chart, meaning on my charts, you don't see anything else. You only see my boxes. There's no BBMA, there's no moving average, there's no stochastic, there's no MACD, there's nothing. But if you open or you have experience using this kind of indicators, you will see that at the places where it bursts like crazy is usually in my zone. So, when you can master the naked chart drawing, meaning your own raw technical analysis that you created by heart, by your own intuition and knowledge, and then you top up with FIBO, you top up with EMA, BBMA, stochastic, volume, you will be able to obtain almost zero pip float. Imagine if I use my engulfing and I use also FIBO stochastics to support. I don't take my entries using FIBO. I don't take my entries using EMA. But what if I added them to my chart and then I will see the confluence that it will happen, a big reversal can happen. So it makes my trade sharper. It's just that I'm very comfortable with the knowledge I have right now at the level I am. So I avoid adding more new variables. But like I said, every year I will take a break, two months, three months. So like Zach M, Neo and all, they were my people for like one year. After that, I took a break. In the period of taking breaks, I usually spend time in developing and sharpening my skills with adding new concepts to it. So maybe this year, after I'm done, I will add BBMA, EMA, and FIBO, and using my engulfing as the base methodology, I'm sure by next year, I can get zero pip float. I'm sure out of 10 trades, now out of 10 trades, we win eight. But next time in the future, out of 10 trades, eight trades will have zero float, two trades will have floats. So even with me, I know my level, I can go slowly in developing my skill. So for you guys, don't jump the queue. Follow the progression of my knowledge. And I, I, and I assure you, you will be able to reach that level soon. But give yourself time and give me time to do it. Like, you cannot expect me to make you someone fucking great in less than six months even. Okay? I will ban you, Zoom user, Black Sheep fan, your ass. These are all scammers. I will ban you from joining in the live anymore, you stupid fuck. Stop joining all these random fake black sheep pages because they ask people for money. Crazy. Crazy idiots. And if you guys are subscribing to any monthly fee signals, please unsubscribe and don't waste money. Okay? But nevertheless, that's it from me for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the learning and the sharing from all the people. Thank you for opening up your accounts. Thank you for sharing your experiences like Zach M, Neo, Faisal, 555. 
aka Dexy. These are all knowledge. I'm just sitting here as the person with the highest knowledge, but that doesn't mean you can use others' experience for your own um, growth as well. I'm sorry I, we hit SL on Friday. I couldn't do anything about it. But you just have to know, when I do my part as a signal provider, I do my best. So, you guys as a signal taker, you do your best to receive the signal. Sharpen my signal. Sharpen my entries. If it hits SL still, fuck it. Another trade. Motherfucker lost 17,000 and made it back in two months later. So, if he can do it, and it's a real account, it's not some demo account, it's not some send account. It's a real account in Hot Forex. So if he 